G'day guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to talk to you about recyclers. Now this is a block from Industrial Craft and as you can see it's hooked up to a bat box which is being supplied by four advanced solar panels all of which are also from Industrial Craft. Now the deal with this particular block and believe me it's actually quite significant if you're going to be playing Feed the Beast and you're going to be doing um, Pretty much anything down the line of industrial craft or uh, Greg Tech, especially Greg Tech. That add-on, you need this because you need the stuff it produces. So, quickly describing it, this bat box is receiving 32 EU per tick, at least during the day, and it's fully charged. This recycler, uh, which is built like, let me show you quickly. Recycle. I'll show you the recipe for it. Okay. Oh, whoops. I wanted to give me stuff. Show me the recipe. There it is. The recycler. You need to build a compressor, three bits of dirt, two refined iron, and a piece of glowstone dust. So, unless you can find another way of getting glowstone dust, um, a good idea would be to find a witch's hut and maybe make a mob spawner out of that. Um, you're going to have to go to the nether before you can start making recyclers. And of course compressor is very simple, it's just mostly stone, machine block and an electronic circuit. That's just those and uh, the advanced circuit. Ah, screw it up here. Ah, who cares? Anyways, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure it all out for yourselves. Um, there you go. This is the... I recommend this or this when you make electronic circuits. Anyways, I'm going to get away from that because I'm getting sidetracked. The recycler. This thing requires two inputs. It requires power, which you can supply by wire, which I am doing right now. Or you can give it, you know, rechargeable batteries, uh, single-use batteries, Lapatron crystals with a charge in it, any, anything that can hold EU and output EU. So you can even put stuff like, uh, you know, your your advanced lap pack or, your, you know, your battery pack. Those things that you can hold on your um, on your body, you can also use them to charge your recycler. But honestly, just hook it up to some sort of EU generation by wire. The second input is pretty much anything. The recycler will take anything you throw at it and after a small process, we'll get rid of it. Here, let me show you. Let me chuck in 64 cobblestone. There you go. By the way, I think this is the fastest um, sort of low tier machine that you can build in industrial craft when it comes to processing stuff. You know, it's a lot faster than the Maserator. For instance, the Maserator, completely unupgraded, is something like three or four times slower. And look, there we go. We got our one and only output scrap here's the deal with this recycler you put stuff into it and there is a one in eight chance that when it is consumed and disappears forever a piece of scrap will be produced scrap is very important for a couple of uses and i'll get onto that at a moment but there is something i need to warn you about with recyclers now like i said you can chuck anything into it and it will slowly chug away um, basically eating up the items and producing scrap every now and then. Look, see, there's another one. If we come over here, I've got a much faster version with, you know, a few overclocker upgrades and transformer upgrades. I'll leave it to you to discover how to make those. And uh, this is basically exactly the same machine as over there. It's just pumped up with the upgrades to make it work a lot faster and be able to draw a lot more power. I've got, you know, just for testing purposes uh, for the video, an ultimate hybrid solar panel. I uh, just, you know, I'm in a creative world, so I can get pretty much anything I want. Max output, 512 EU per tick. This is important. Uh, it illustrates beautifully the fact that these recyclers, when they're pumped up, uh, they basically, I think you need, like, nine or ten overclocker upgrades to make this thing work at its maximum efficiency which is uh it chews through 
a whole stack of 64 items of something every 3.2 seconds because um, basically this thing and all other industrial craft machines that are pumped up with all of these upgrades and so forth, they can only do 20 operations per second. So 20, 40, 60, 4. 3.2 seconds and you'll chew through a whole stack of something as I'm about to show. That was more or less 3.2 seconds. Um, now what I was going to say is that the recycler, don't mention, um, you can only input, you, you only need a constant input of 512 EU per tick while this is operating at its fastest. Uh, you don't need any more so honestly I could take out two of these upgrades and it would be fine that could handle 512 um, I I'd, I'd just chucked in four because I could it was easy to spawn it in now the distinction that I'm trying to make with the recycler is that it cannot actually produce scrap out of anything it does produce scrap out of most items you know you could chuck in wood pulp there you go and I'm getting scrap and of course, I've got a more automated system going here. You know, these are pumping the uh, scrap out and into my chest, which is a buffer. And I've got something that is kind of like a buffer chest for items to go into. And I can chuck items in. And it will slowly suck all of that stuff out as soon as I make this thing go a lot faster. There we go. Pumping items in. Only when there's room. And the wood pulp is getting chewed through nicely. But, as you are about to see soon, look at that. Tiny pile of wood pulp. I'm chewing through it, but I'm not getting any scrap. And the same story goes for sticks as well. Sticks is another item in the game that you can chuck in your recycler. The recycler will happily you know, do its operation and make it disappear. So if you really want to get, you know, just disappear items and whatnot that you don't want, then the recycler is a good option. But be warned, sticks, and as far as I know, tiny piles of pretty much anything, whether it be a tiny pile of tin, tiny pile of wood pulp, tiny pile of uh, gold dust or diamond dust, Anything like that that you chuck into the recycler will not produce scrap. That is a very important thing to know. So don't bother putting those items in if you want to produce scrap. Uh, anyways, that's uh, basically a pumped up automated version of a recycler. You, know, you could have stuff going in constantly and it will just happily produce the scrap and dump it somewhere useful. Now. I suppose I could talk to you about something like this. For those of you who have already played around with this sort of thing, um, you probably know what this is and you probably guess what's going on here. This is industrial craft and mixed with some build craft stuff. Oh, and by the way, back here, this was basically, let's see, what other mods do I have? In this little example, you only need industrial craft. You don't even need um, Greg Tech add-on to run this. Mind you, everything that I've got here is being run with the Feed the Beast Ultimate pack. So pretty much almost every Feed the Beast pack, every version with the, you know all the tech add-ons and stuff, you, you can run all of these setups that I'm about to show you. Let's see, this has uh, these are all build craft. All of this up here is red power. And the two chests are from iron chests. They're basically upgraded to diamond, so they, you know, a single chest holds a lot more. That's what that is. In this setup, or oh, yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same thing actually. Iron chests, red power, and build craft. Now, what do we have in here? I have a chest of oak wood. Let's just say somewhere else, somewhere along the lines, I have myself a tree farm and I am producing oak wood hand over fist somehow I've got it completely automated let's just assume that and I can get my hands on a lot of this stuff and I don't need it because I've got an excess what can I do well I can take one of these and program this little thing from Billcraft called an auto crafting table to 
produce four wooden planks automatically when there is a wooden pipe connected to it and an engine is piping it out. Now here we go. This is how you can make an item a lot more useful for the purposes of scrap. Up here, as you can see, it's slowly going down. It's turning one oak wood into four wooden planks. And going further, I've got them all, you know, they'll randomly go between one of these four chests and these auto crafting tables next to all four chests are turning three oak wood planks into six oak wood slabs. Why am I doing this? Well, for every one of these oak woods that I am feeding this whole little system, I'm producing eight oak wood slabs. So that's a pretty good conversion rate. It's basically just a little bit of a setup. You know, all of this doesn't need any maintenance at all whatsoever. You can just set it and forget it. Uh, set it up once, make all of the stuff come here into my, you know, I've got a triple diamond chest buffer going here to hold stuff. I've got filters uh, with uh, pneumatic tubes, feeding all of this stuff into the recycler that I have here. Another one that's, you know, it's pumped up, it's got a good power source, and it's got an output that is constantly filling this chest. It's more efficient way of using as little items as you can to make as many items as you could possibly get to feed your recycler and essentially have it produce more scrap, more bang for your buck. This is one thing you can do. Another thing that you could do, which is probably common, is a cobblestone generator farm. You know, you could use block breakers from um, Red Power and, uh, you know, get your cobblestone flowing, chuck them into a chest, and with three cobblestone, you can make six cobblestone slabs. Now, it's not as efficient as, say, doing oak wood, but I can tell you right now, if you've got all of these mods installed, <laughs> you can make an automated cobblestone f uh, farm a lot easier than you can make an automated oak wood farm. You know, automation is kind of the key with all of these little tech add-on sort of mods in most of these mod packs. You know, you've got essentially ways of making items appear pretty much out of thin air and uh, making them all renewable and so forth but it takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of setting up to get it happening but it is nice once you have it going to get in this particular case scrap look at that now i've got almost two and a half stacks of scrap and it's going to keep going actually i want to over this time i've only got one redstone engine pumping out of all of these auto crafting tables before I got rid of them um, because I decided it was a bit silly and a little bit cumbersome and it was hard to see what was going on but before I shot this video I had four of these redstone engines on each um, woodcraft uh, you know, wooden transport pipes just so I could you know pump things out quicker and make things happen quicker but for the purposes of the video I got rid of them so you can easily see what's going on here. So that's a setup, one example of how you can quickly produce a lot of scrap from as little material as possible. And of course, because I'm producing eight slabs from each one oak wood log, then you know that, as I told you before, oh, what? Why is that not producing? Oh, because it's night? Maybe it's not getting enough power? Let's make it day. Anyways, um, when this thing is actually receiving enough power... Actually, that's very interesting. I wonder why that's not doing anything. What is wrong with you? Why are you broken? Hmm. Huh. Anyways, um... <laughs> if you don't have little bugs in your system like this, then I suppose, let's see, let's take a couple of these out. Yeah, it's not getting enough power for some reason. Oh, of course, I'm blocking that off with this. 
Duh. Okay. Sorry. Ultimate. Oh, wow. That's professional. Here I am doing a tutorial video and I stuff it up. Glass. Fiber. Cable. Okay. Through the magical power of creative mode. Ta-da! And she works once again. Fantastic. Let me just get rid of this. Now, I've been talking about recyclers and I've been talking about, you know, good efficient ways to make scrap. Another efficient way, if it were possible, would to be to, again, start with your oak wood log, you know, turn it into oak wood planks. At this stage, it could just be, you know, cobblestone or whatever, and you could skip that step. But essentially making a lot out of very little. Now, think about it. I've got one oak wood log here, producing four oak wood planks. And in here, I'm using from Red Power a diamond handsaw to make this into two micro blocks, the wooden plank slab. And of course, you can replace that with cobblestone and get two cobblestone slabs, which are you know vertical and not horizontal like the uh, vanilla slabs. Um, this works for pretty much any item, actually. You need pumpkins, bookshelves, blocks of diamond, whatever you want. Remember, for scrap purposes, we just want crappy, renewable, uh, constant resources that we can get that we just don't care about. So, one of these equals two of these. So, already we're up to eight per log. But you can keep on going with this process to make a wooden panel, diamond handsaw on the wooden panels to make wooden plank covers, and so on, and so forth. Basically, if you could produce one log Take it through all of these auto crafting tables to the point where you have finally got this. You will have produced 128 wooden plank cover corners from one wooden log. One, one wooden oak log or one wooden anything log to be honest. Uh, so long as these hand saws can cut it up. It could be spruce wood, it could be um, birch, it could, uh, you know could even be jungle wood. These things, cut them up into these tiny little blocks. 128 from one, that's what I call efficient. Now you probably need a few um, of the pumped up recyclers to keep up with that sort of demand, but I've noticed a little problem. Now, hmm, that's full of sticks and I don't know why. Let's see, what do we have here? We have a demo setup showing you Again, another thing with a recycler. Let's get a whole bunch of those corners. Uh, let's see. Wooden plank cover corner. That's exactly it. That is this. Let's dump them in here, just as proof of concept. And while we're at it, let's get some overclocker upgrades to make this happen faster. No, no, my luck. By the time I get this in, it'll have already produced some scrap. Oh! <laughs> Speak of the devil, there's some scrap. So proof of concept, these things can be chucked into recyclers and they can produce scrap. So they're not like um, they're not like the sticks and so forth. They can produce scrap. And this is all nice and well. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, why did you make that set up over there when you could have just showed us this? There's a little bit of a problem with using hand saws and auto crafting tables. Look at this. Now, these things are like tools, you know. If you use them, they take a little bit of damage. In the case of the diamond handsaw, I don't know, you get 2,000 or 8,000 uses out of it or something like that. So quite a lot of uses. But, look at that. It didn't just add the damage to the handsaw. The handsaw disappeared. Uh, same thing with this one. And so on and so forth. Uh, we're losing handsaws and that sucks. And just to show that it's not just because the diamond handsaw didn't already have damage, just in case you guys have any doubt, here's a diamond handsaw that I've used in a normal crafting table a few times and made some micro blocks. Ah, it still disappears. So it's not just fresh handsaws that have no damage on them whatsoever having this little bug. It's a bug. It's kind of these things were not designed. This is from Buildcraft and this is from Red Power 2. So... Let's just assume that these were not built with those in mind. Fairly reasonable assumption. How do we get around this 
and make that all magical number of 128 of those wooden plank cover corners out of one wooden, um, one oak wood block. There is a way. Now, let's just assume that we've gone down the line. I've got this, I've had this running for a while actually. Oak wood planks, um, a chest full of them. They're getting pumped out and it seems they're overflowing. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me, actually? But anyways, pumping items into this. And I honestly do not know why they're missing. They should. But anyways, this is an automatic crafting table Mark II. It's slightly different, and it does handle the problem of the handsaw. And a little bit of lag there. Just That was nice. Thank you, computer. Instead of putting the items that you want crafted it into the crafting slots. This does pretty much exactly the same thing as the normal old-fashioned auto crafting tables. Oh jeez. Another problem with myself. I haven't properly, you know, fiddled around with this and actually got myself, uh, you know, a complete idea of how this thing works. I've only fiddled around with it a little bit, but basically Auto crafting table, similar idea, but what you do is you put ghost images of what it is you want to use in here to produce this. And you can choose how many of it you want as a maximum amount, like a stack or whatever. And you pump the items out of the top. There we go. Proof of concept. The automatic crafting table Mark II, I'm assuming from Buildcraft maybe? What you do is you load up all of the stuff you want to use with your crafting recipe in this inventory and it will use them up. See, notice how it's making stuff. This isn't disappearing. This is just ghost images. Honestly, you take an item, you click it on, and then you put the item back and it's just a ghost image. These, this is the diamond handsaw currently being used. So, proof of concept. If you can fiddle around with these automatic crafting table Mark IIs, you can then set up that almighty 128 items of something that can be turned into scrap out of one. Or in the case of if you're just using cobblestone and stuff, then I suppose the conversion rate would be 32, which is quite a lot more than eight. Mind you, having said that, you will be chewing through hand saws, so you Probably your best bet is to make some sort of iron farm, maybe, and then produce lots of iron hand saws and use those instead and have them constantly being replenished. Take a bit of fiddling and uh, mucking around, but eh, it's doable. I'll leave that up to you to decide what to do. Now, I've talked a lot about scrap, producing scrap, recyclers, so forth. Now, I'm finally going to get to the point of talking about why you want scrap in the first place. How is it useful? Well, I'm running Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack at the moment, and to be honest, there are two really good uses for scrap. One common one is to feed your matter fabricator with the required scrap to make you you matter. I did a video on that last time, so if you want to know what a matter fabricator is and you know what it's used for, etc. so on and so forth, go check that out. And if you want a video on UU Matter and uh, how it can be used and how it's significant in the game, then check out one of my future videos, which I plan to do solely on UU Matter. I also plan on doing a video on um, Iridium. I plan on doing a video on the industrial electro. Uh, bleh, can't talk. Industrial electrolyzer, and a video on the. Uh, what's called the industrial centrifuge. Those two machines are from Greek Tech Add-on, and a lot of people like using them, but there are a lot of recipes with them, and they produce a lot of items which can be used in a lot of ways, and it's all a bit confusing, so I may as well do a couple of tutorial videos on those just to help you out. Now, getting back to it. Jeez, I get sidetracked a lot. Scrap. That's one use of scrap. There is another use of scrap which a lot of people don't actually use for some reason, at least that's what I've seen from YouTube videos and so forth of Let's Players and that. They don't bother using the scrap to produce scrap boxes. 
What's a scrap box? Well, as you can see, it's crafted like this. Nine scrap gives you one scrap box. And if I just go over here, now I've got the scrap box in my bar at the moment, my hot bar. I have it selected. And when you, uh, you know, left click like usual, nothing happens. If I was on a block, I would break it eventually, like I was punching something with my hand. But if you right click a scrap box out into the world, what just happened? I got a piece of scrap. Now I'm in creative mode, so I could right click scrap boxes all day and it would stay as 64 in my hotbar. But um, if you're not in creative mode, if you're in survival mode, then that will go down one. You know, I should have 63 scrap boxes, 62 scrap boxes, so so on. What's that? Oh, okay. What's going on? Calcite dust and scrap. So, um, if I press the drop button, yeah, I can drop scrap boxes, but if, let me pick those up. If I right click in the world, and this is anywhere, to be honest, you know, you can right click on anything, you throw them up in the air. Let me just spam a few. Look, I've got all these random items. If feather, dirt, redstone, dust, sawdust, a filled tin can that looks bad. Hmm, I don't want to eat that. Sign, pyrite dust, gravel, etc., so on and so forth. What's going on? The scrap box, when right clicked out into the world, will, and I kid you not, have a random chance of producing one of what seems to be something like, uh, I think there's 76 different types of items in the game. Now, this is significant, guys. When you think about it, this, once it's all set up, if you have something that produces scrap and burns through scrap and so forth, and you've got generators that require no, you know, sort of extra input and whatnot, uh, or maintenance, and you can use renewable resources such as cobblestone or um, wood, this is a system that can renewably and without maintenance produce scrap. And that means if you can produce scrap renewably without maintenance, then without maintenance and renewably you can produce scrap boxes, which means every single item that can be made with a scrap box, you can produce renewably. That's an important concept. As you saw, there was redstone there. I know redstone is a renewable resource ever since the witches were uh, made, but hey, how hard is it to go to a swamp and find a witch's hut? It's not easy. So let's just get rid of overclock upgrades. Scrap boxes. Okay. Um, whoop, not scrap you. That's how to make them. Now, of course, the other use for a scrap box is as fuel inside a furnace. But we're not interested in that because, to be honest, it's a waste of a scrap box. Uh, you can also use it in a generator to generate seven, eight, uh, yeah, that much EU. Who cares about that? That's a waste of a scrap box. This, uh, mass fabricator, well, if you have just industrial craft uh, installed and not Greg Tech add-on, or you haven't fiddled around with the settings of or you've fiddled around with the settings of Greg Tech add-on and you've disabled the matter fabricated or something or other. If you have access to a mass fabricator, yes, you can use it as an amplifier instead of just normal scrap to help make you you matter. That's all nice and well, but that's not significant either. This is significant. Now, check it out. One of 38 pages, and I can guarantee you the last page has two recipes. So 38 times 2 is 76. There are 76 items that are renewable automatically because of the scrap box. Whether or not they were already renewable in the game is irrelevant. They are now renewable. There is a 63.6% .6 chance that when you use a scrap box, you get scrap. That sucks. So basically, 63.6% uh, .6 chance that you know when you throw scrap boxes, you're going to throw nine of them. You can get nine scrap back and turn it back into one scrap box. It kind of sucks. That's a recent addition to the scrap box. Um, very recently they added that just to, I don't know, be a pain and make scrap boxes 
not so overpowered in terms of just getting a whole bunch of resources, I suppose, which is fair enough, but keep that in mind. You've got high percentage, almost two thirds of a chance to get scrap back. That sucks. Let's see, you've got wooden hoe, wooden axe, wooden sword, other your wooden tools, signs, sticks. Let's see, dirt, grass block, gravel, pumpkin, and it just gets more interesting from here. I'm just gonna quickly flick through. Look, you got food, you got cells, you've got slime balls, rubber. Oh, this is a good one. Machine parts, 16 of those. You can make from five electronic circuits and four, I think it is refined iron or something. So, you know, to get that, 0.16% chance to get it, but hey, a little bit less uh, resource intensive than making them normally. 0.86% chance to get a single use battery. When you get these, just dump them in your MFSE or if you or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> I just realized what I said. Um, yeah, and you can get free EU from this. This is kind of like generating EU. Now, getting back to the scrap box. I didn't mean to do that. That was lag. Scrap box. Let's go past that point. And so on and so forth. You can, you know, if you've got not enough items installed, you can go ahead and check this out yourself. Redstone, glowstone, small chance of getting it, but you can get it. Coal dust. You can use that to make carbon plates. Charcoal dust. I think you can use that to make, um, with a bit of sulfur and something else. Yeah, gunpowder and so forth. Let's see. Iron dust, gold dust, silver dust, electrum dust, tin dust, copper dust. If you produce these scrap boxes fast enough and you can, you know, make them, you make all of these items, you'll essentially not really have to go mining often ever again, to be honest. That's how significant scrap boxes are, and I think people are underutilizing them. Bauxite dust, aluminium dust, etc., so on and so forth, all these odd different dusts, and yes, you saw platinum dust. There's a 1 in 10,000 chance that when you throw a scrap box, you're going to get platinum dust. But hey, it's still there. You know, it's possible. I didn't say it was going to produce the items quickly, but they're all there. Chrome, titanium, magnesium, endstone dust, yellow garnet, red garnet. Here's the interesting part. Olivine, rubies, sapphires, green sapphires, emeralds and diamonds. One in 5,000 chance of getting a diamond or an emerald. There you go, guys. All of those items just became renewable. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, that's all nice and well, but it kind of sucks that I'd have to, you know, constantly right-click these things. Well, that's true, but if we come over here, there are always ways to automate things. Now, this is a solution of automating things from the Greg Tech add-on. Here we have something called this scrap boxinator. I'll let you discover how to make it. Personally, I don't use this, and I'll show you why in a minute, but Scrapboxinator, put scrap boxes in there, and an item is produced there after a certain amount of time. It takes 32 EU per tick. Let me just make it day. Uh, yeah, it takes 32 EU per tick, so that box is good enough for it. And um, it produces items almost instantly. Uh, it's pretty much a matter of, depending on how fast you can actually pump items out of it, is where how fast it will actually work. Uh, it's got this symbol on all five sides and on the side of the scrap box and you've got this side with like a, a red plus and that's a little black box. That's where your output is, hence the arrow facing that side. Uh, here I have preloaded through the lovely use of NEI and creative mode a diamond chest full of scrap boxes. Check it out. I got a timer going, there's a filter, eight scrap boxes at a time. This thing is already automatically pumping out whatever is in this top slot and it will dump all of the items into that chest. Here we go. And this thing is running at 0.4 uh, seconds as a time interval. I find that is the best way to run these particular filters at. And look, see, it's producing items and it's pumping them out when these things tick over, which is once every second. So every second I'm producing a random item. And all of those items are getting dumped in here. Fair enough. 
But you're probably wondering, eh, I want to produce items fast. I couldn't blame you, to be honest. I, this is not necessary, to be honest. This, sure, it only chews up 32 EU per tick, and you could probably make a few of these, you know, in line, so yeah, you get your items pumping out faster. But it, let's just presume you've got some sort of system somewhere else that's making scrap hand over fist, and you're converting them into scrap boxes hand over fist, you want things to go a little bit faster. So, why not do something like this? This monster is something I invented a little while ago, even before the scrap box and aid was uh, made. This is how I automatically made scrap boxes and made them produce all of those items. Here I've got, at the start, this is diamond chest full of scrap, and I'll explain this pipe going into it in a second. I've got it as a buffer next to an auto crafting table. Again, pumping out the items into, what's this? It's just a normal Minecraft, vanilla Minecraft dispenser. It's got nine slots, so it can hold nine full stacks of scrap boxes, which is very useful. It's a nice little buffer. If you need more, just make more dispensers. But I've got it all hooked up to, this is a timer. Now, vanilla blocks, like the dispenser and the piston and so forth, they don't trigger when they get a single little pulse from these timers from Red Power. They need to be a longer pulse. So what have I got? I've got a repeater here, just quickly uh, sort of like delaying the um, pulse from this wire one tick afterwards. So this pulse is on for one tick and then the next tick this turns off, but this then sends its power. So technically this stays on for another tick. Two ticks and the pulse is long enough for a dispenser to work. If I didn't have this um, repeater and the extra wire joining this output here, this would not actually tick over and your dispenser would never kick out things. Now you're probably wondering, dispenser, what does it do? You probably guessed by now that it doesn't just, you know, drop scrap boxes out into the world like you would normally do. It actually does sort of similar to the right click function. It won't spit out scrap boxes it will spit out the items that the scrap box could become. It's very useful. And what have I got? I've got a little chamber here, and there's an obsidian pipe catching all of the items and putting it through the system of pipes into this. This is a decision tree. Now, we're gonna get scrap a lot. Yeah, that's a given. So why not just, you know, cop our losses on the chin and pump it back into the chest with scrap. That way we're not wasting. Here, we have all of these items, which are all possibilities from scrap boxes. And the beauty about these is, A, personally, I don't want them. I know nobody wants wooden tools. Why do you want wooden tools, guys? And sticks, really? Seriously? Come on. If you need sticks in your world, you're not playing Minecraft properly. And as for signs, well, they're a dime a dozen, and you don't need that many. So, all of these items, I say, bugger you, go away go into this system here. Now I've got, let me explain this very quickly. This is a whole bunch of build craft pipes. When the items that I showed you come to here, they've got a one in three chance of going in either of these three directions. And when they do, they'll go down here. And again, for each of the three pipe systems, they've got a one in two chance of going and splitting further and ending up in these diamond chests down here. Why did I do this? Well, you see a battery of generators, normal industrial craft generators. These things, you pretty much usually used to only use them if you played industrial craft at the very start of the game, just to generate enough power so you could, you know, go through, make a few things, uh, eventually get your solar panels going or whatnot, whatever generators you would actually use, and then you would just disappear this thing. The only time you would use it is in crafting recipes for other generators. This is the basic tier generator. It generates EU by burning items. You know, it's items that can normally be burnt pretty much inside a furnace is what can be burnt inside a generator. You guessed it, all of these items in here in the white part of this diamond pipe can be burnt in a generator. Um, doesn't show in the tooltip here, but you know, 
like a sign, you know, generates a certain amount of EU per tick, um, and a uh, certain amount of EU all up. I've got all of these generators shoving all the power they produce into an MFSU, and these filters just make sure that, you know, only one of type of item goes into the generator at a time. Uh, I've got this system pumping every should be every make it every 12 seconds so just in case I think there are no items that I have chosen to get put into these generators that will take longer than 12 seconds to burn uh, if I did produce these items through these filters faster than that then the items would not only just end up here into the burn slot but if there is already an item still in the burn slot then the next item pumped in from the filter will end up up here where you're in the charging slot and that kind of stuffs things up a bit it's a bit of a waste so make sure your filters or whatever system you have pumping items into these generators is pumping them in fairly slowly hence why I've got six so we're spreading things out now that's getting rid of all of the waste items all the rest of the items the useful stuff gets dumped into this chest this filter I've set it up to just go through and snake around three rows of fully upgraded barrels. Again, thank you, NEI, and also, what is it, creative mode. Very easy to make that set up, and this will show you fairly well exactly what sort of items and how much of each, thank you, lag, um, how much of each will be produced. So, let's turn this puppy on, shall we? All I need to do is grab one piece of scrap complete this so it's actually making scrap boxes so I'm making four scrap boxes every time these redstone engines cycle 36 scrap every second is being used from this chest that's quite a bit so if you can somehow keep up with this that sort of demand with scrap you can make this happen now this isn't going fast because I slowed down this time because it gets noisy. Let's make it, uh, let's see, again, 0.4. Look at that. The dispenser, if you can see, it's spitting out the items and the items are all ending up in the obsidian pipe. Beautiful. Just what we want. Like rotten flesh. That was gold dust. More scrap so on and so forth and this little system of pipes is sorting everything out look see the scrap is going back in there all of the burnable crap is going into the generators and every now and then you should see you know a few of these generators light up having said that remember i put it on a 12 second timer there we go see just burning through all the useful useless items just to make a little bit more eu why not instead of just throwing them into a lava bin or a void pipe, why not put them to good use? Again, this sort of system, it only takes the resources to set it up. There's no maintenance required. You can feed pretty much any burnable item in here. So, why not? Now, all of the stuff from... Jeez, that's a lot of scrap going back in. That really sucks, that whole... Pretty much two-thirds of the items will become scrap. But here we go, look at this. My wall is already filling up, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Let's see, what have we got? What's this? Netherrack dust, sawdust, gravel, coal dust, obsidian dust, paper, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, pyrite dust, gold dust, aluminium dust. A couple of bones there. Steel, sodalite dust, which you get from, I think it's um, putting in an industrial centrifuge, lapis lazuli that is one of the products you get. Another one is lazarite dust. Silicon cell! Hey, look at that! I can use this to make solar panels. <laughs> Calcite dust, mind you, you could also chuck uh, cells that aren't empty. You can put them into an extractor and it will just extract and get rid of, disappear forever, anything that was inside the cell, turn it back into an empty cell. Useful to know if you want cells or if you want to use the cells or these tin cans of food put them, once they're empty, same thing with the food cells by the way, into a uh, extractor and away goes the food, you just end up with an empty tin can, empty cells, empty tin cans, put them in your macerators 
and you get tiny piles of uh, tin dust, which you, you know, four of those, put it back into normal tin dust, put that into a furnace of sorts, and it's raining on my parade, thank you very much. Put those into a furnace, and you've got yourself a tin ingot. So, again, even if you're not getting tin dust directly, there are a couple of other ways to get tin anyways from this process. Let's see, we've got flint dust, calcite dust, lead dust, so on and so forth. Look at this. Uh, if I was really savvy, then I would further automate this system to go ahead and automatically use these items in the way that I want to make more things happen. You know, I could maybe have another decision tree here where, you know, all right, pumping them all into um, another chest or, you know, getting a diamond pipe or maybe a red power filter. And I would say, okay, so paint these particular items that certain color. The, uh, say the tin cans empty or filled, good or bad, and any and all cells that I don't want, uh, pump them all into, towards an extractor, and then to a macerator, and then to a furnace, and then pump all of that tin dust, or those tin ingots, I should say, into somewhere useful. Uh, look at this. My barrel is filling up quite nicely. All of these items are different. Isn't it just a lovely sight? And all for the cost of setting up. If I could somehow keep up with the demand of scrap, this would just keep on going and going and going and going. Yes, it's a small amount right now, but just remember, we've only been sitting here for about a couple of minutes viewing this happening. I've got 12 netherrack dust. I've got four gravel. I've got all sorts of things. Look, I've got food. It's producing chicken for me. How nice is that? Uh, let's see, netherrack, uh, grass, this is sulfur, there's silver, charcoal dust, uh, let's see, what's up here, brass dust, oh there you go, a filled tin can, piece of rubber, there's a ruby, that's a fairly rare sight that ruby, that's uh, pretty good that happened pretty quickly, so yeah, I recommend this get your recyclers happening get some sort of farm happening chop up your blocks or um you know craft them into something more you know more of everything is better for your recyclers pump up those recyclers get this automated system starting and then if you're not going to use the scrap boxinator do something like this with the dispenser mind you if the noise of ticking really gets to you just Shove this about 20, 25 blocks underground. Just run the pipes and the signals and all that down. 25 blocks underground and you won't hear it happening. And then you just pump all of the resultant items back up. Another 25 blocks back to your decision tree. Very simple solution for that. And I recommend it because it does get annoying. I remember I set this up first time in uh, one of my houses. It was actually pretty much right there, right next to me. And I was going, tick 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 it was so annoying like honestly you get over it after a while but i hope you found something useful out of this i hope you now realize as i do how important scrap and scrap boxes can be to your game and um pff, yeah let me know what you think let me know if you've made something like this before or if you're going to make it now uh let me know uh by all means, comment on the video. Chances are I will probably reply to your comments because I don't get many views. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of comments to reply to. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at the next video, which would probably be uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, um, tossing up between a few things. I started with the matter fabricator, and I've talked about the input. Um, let's see. This is about the output which is, no, this is about the input, which is scrap. Uh, sticking with the matter fabricator, I need to talk about two more things. Generating EU um, and how you do that. That's also an important video because I think a lot of people probably struggle to find sort of like the best, most consistent, easiest way to generate a lot of EU because when you use stuff like the matter fabricator, you're going to need EU hand over fist right from the get-go. So... 
that's a difficult topic to um, tackle, but I'll have to tackle that. And then I'll have to talk about UU Matter. So either UU Matter or EU Generation. One of those will be my next video. I hope to see you then. Catch you later, guys.